Chris, you ready to talk NFL? Yeah, let's go. Let's talk NFL. NFL Week 7. Again, we did not get to recap Week 6. That's fine. We will be recapping Week 7 because we are back on a regular-ass schedule. Let's, uh, let's talk about some of these games. There are some fairly big ones this week. We got an undefeated matchup in Week 7. I'm kind of stoked about it. But before we do that, we got to start on Thursday night with the NFC Least matchup, and that would be the Giants and the Eagles. Both teams only have one win on the season. The Eagles, however, have a tie, which puts them in first place in the division right now, which is... No, the Cowboys are first place in the division. Do the Cowboys have two wins? They have two wins. Unbelievable. I can't even... Who else did they beat? Oh, the Giants. Never mind. The Giants. I was about to say, <laughs> it was just last week. I'm, I'm so used to them losing so much. I, I felt like that game was a loss because of the Dak thing. But either way, uh, the Eagles opened a six and a half point favorite. They are now a four and a half point favorite. I don't even know where to go with this. Like, there are still people in this world that think that Carson Wentz is a good quarterback. And I understand I, that they have lost all these skilled players. I understand that their offensive line has been beat up, et cetera. But I, this guy is just not a good quarterback. When, and, and, nope. I, I don't understand how they're able to keep these games close. I mean, they were within a two-point conversion of tying up the Ravens. Gar- but- the, the Carson Wentz has become the new Kirk Cousins of garbage time. Get down by four scores, come back late, and and make it look good. It's it's insane. It, it's really insane. I I don't think this is a good football team. I can't, in in good faith, in in any of this, think that they are going to be able to cover against anybody, including the woeful New York Super Giants. What? I wonder, can the Giants pull off two wins in a row? I mean... I don't know that they pull off a win, but this is four and a half, man. I, I, this I don't know. I don't know. Like Why can't goal. they? Why can't the Giants beat this shitty Eagles team? Well, I'll tell you this. They, they needed uh, a turnover uh, touchdown just to be able to beat the, the Redskins last week. Hey, or whatever they are. Hey, I'm going to tell you this. Team. My boy Riverboat Ron did the right thing. He went for two. He tried to win the game on that play. Yeah, and, no, I, and props to him. I think that's the right call. I, I'll tell you this. With the way that the Giants were moving the football and, yeah. and the way that Washington was finally getting some things going, I might would have just kicked the extra point and gone to overtime. You no, know, I, I, so that's the, that's the normal play. I, I think Riverboat realized we haven't been on the two-yard line all day. Yeah. This might be this might be our best chance to get it in, it, you know, on, from the two yard line. That's a so. that's a good point. That's a good point. Philip Wiggins uh, asked, "Do you think the NFC East gets a team in the playoffs with six wins?" Well, they're going to get a team in the playoffs regardless. Um, six, I, I would say. So I actually saw somebody did the math on it. It might have been Chris Sharp, Warren Sharp. That uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Warren Sharp. It, it, I don't remember who it was. Technically. Technically, they could get in with four wins. They'd have a couple of ties. Um, but that's the least amount of wins a team could win a division on mathematically. It's pretty insane. <laughs> it's, it's I'll pretty tell you insane. this. If ever there's a year for somebody to win a division with four wins, it's 2020. Uh, let's see. Birdie said, Hurst has been a bright spot for the Eagles. I like the Giants here. I like that they've kept their heads down and just play. They're getting a bit better. Hey, the Washington team beat the Eagles. Yes, they did. Uh, and it was hurt. Yeah, Hurst. He, he corrected himself. Yeah. Uh, Terry said six might be way too much. This is a division of falling upwards. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's insane. I've never seen anything like this. Like, it's I've, bad. You know, we, we did have uh, the Seahawks get into the playoffs with the, with only seven wins, you know, back a decade ago, I guess. That was a long time but, ago. But, but he, and that team won a playoff game. Yeah. They, they, whoever gets here, it doesn't matter. They're not winning a playoff game. No. Not, not at all. Not at all. And I think this is the kind of thing that needs to happen to get the NFL to just give the best teams the home games and then go from there. I don't think that a team in this division deserves to host a playoff game. Well, this year it won't matter. I mean, unless it's Dallas, nobody's really going to have many fans on the stands anyway. So, Well, I mean, you got a, you got a valid point there. Brown Yeti said that getting hurt was a loss for the whole division. He was the only bright spot, maybe the only person who could actually play football. Hey, there's a lot of good talent on that Dallas Cowboys team. However, yeah. there is no offensive line right now. They got dudes out for days. They've got a bunch of guys out on defense. They finally got uh, uh, Brock Vander Esch back on defense, but that didn't seem to make any kind of a difference against uh against No, it don't matter. So, but, uh, so Giants and Eagles, um, 
I'm going Giants. Are you doing the same thing? Yeah, excuse me. If I got to pick it, I'm picking the Giants. I would stay away from this game. And you know me. I love the NFL. You know that. You understand that I protect the shield. I really do. Um, This is an excellent opportunity for people to To watch watch App State uh, and Arkansas State. (laughs) Yeah, App State and Arkansas State. Go watch the Sun Belt. They are really good. It's really exciting. It's going to be way better football than this. Yes. And I don't – and I – listen – I know we started as a college football podcast, and that's how we get paid is from college football podcast. I I do not like college football nearly as much as I like the NFL. It's just not as good of a product. This game, this week, this Thursday, uh, it's going to be a way better product. This is going to be shit. I agree. I agree. Uh, Birdie said, didn't the card with Warner, uh, the cards with Warner make a Super Bowl off a seven win season lost to Pitt? No, no, no. They, uh, I think they were nine uh, and seven. Yeah, I was about to say, uh, they weren't great, but they, I think they were above 500. They were. The, the last team that I can remember that made it on a, a, at seven and nine, I believe, was the Seahawks. And that was that like is the last team. Now, both of the Giants' Super Bowl wins hurt pretty bad. Yeah. Um, were both, both were nine. No, no. Uh, uh, one was eight and eight. I thought one was nine and seven, wasn't it? I don't. They were both wild cards. I know the one where they beat the eighteen and no Pats, where they were eight and eight. I left it. Yeah, we'll have to dig on that. We'll have to. I thought they that. were both eight and eight. And maybe so. But those were know. wild cards. They they didn't make the playoffs because of the division. They were they were the yeah. wild card team. Show enough. All right, Steelers and Titans. Uh, Titans are a one point favorite at home. Uh, since the whole COVID issue and whatnot with Tennessee over in Nashville, uh, the Titans have been. That offense has been pretty unstoppable. It's 42 points. Well, it's points. not even that. Before then, they've been really good. I oh, mean, yeah. look at the stats. Oh, Ryan unreal. Tannehill is up there with Lamar Jackson and 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 uh, and Patrick Mahomes and and Russell Wilson as just as good. Now, he's not he's he's definitely a tier below those guys. Yeah, he's not the dynamic playmaker that those guys oh, are. Oh no. But as far but as his, num- his numbers aren't a hell of a lot far off from theirs. He didn't have yeah. near the touchdowns Russell does, but nobody does. As far as the efficiency goes, uh, yes. I mean, he like he's unbelievable. He he yes. just throws touchdowns he's and first downs. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's uh, it's insane. I'm I don't know. I, <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense to me how how he's turned into this. Uh, let's see. Brown Yeti said uh, second one from the Giants. Uh, they were ten and six. All right, so yeah, okay. the Giants were ten and six. Philip Wiggins said, "I believe the Cardinals made it to the Super Bowl at eight and eight. Uh, nope, I'm looking at it right now. They were nine and seven. So yeah, I thought I thought the only division winner and Super Bowl contender I think was was the was the Giants at eight and eight. I don't think we've ever had a Super Bowl contender below 500 in regular season before. Other than that, let's see. Uh, Giants were ten and six. Um, let's see in 2008, and the Giants were nine and seven in 2012. Okay, so they were, so they were above, above 500. Then. So either way, uh, either way, I mean it's kind of it's kind of crazy. Philip Wiggins said Derrick Henry for MVP. No, no, I don't think so. I, I think this is still a quarterback league, still quarterback league, league. and still, still quarterback a quarterback league. award. So uh, I, I think the Steelers are. Man, they looked really good last week, but so did the Titans. But the Titans had to go to overtime against the Texans. Like I. Birdie said, Chris, I'm off the Steelers this week. We'll be on the Titans here. Tough scheduling spot for the Steelers. Division game last week. Ravens on deck. Tough spot like the Titans here. I. So here's the thing. At some point, this Titans thing has got to slow down, I would Why? think. Well, because they, they played on Tuesday. They played on Sunday. They went to overtime. I feel like, it, but I mean, maybe maybe there's just a tough scheduling spot, or spot for both of them. Like I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know that it's any different. So let me let me tell you this. All right, the Steelers still haven't beaten a good team. So they beat the hell out of my Browns. That that happened. Okay, I didn't think that would happen. I think the Browns. I thought the Browns were were on their level now. The Steelers' defense has still not looked good. Making Baker look bad. Hell, everybody's done that. Okay, the Eagles scored a shitload of points on them. More points they've scored all year. They scored against the Eagle uh, against the Steelers defense. They gave up more points to 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 the Giants than anybody's given up. Almost they've given up almost as many points to the Broncos as anybody's given up. And that was on their third string quarterback who was driving the football with a chance to score and win the game. Um, so so I just I still think this seems fraudulent. I think they're massively flawed, but they just keep running into teams that are just trash. Yeah, and this Titans team is not trash. 
That no, is, uh, no, that is I think sure. I I love the Titans this week. I love the Titans this week. This will be the best defense by far that the Steelers have played. And Big Ben has given the other team at least three to four opportunities every week that they've played so far. And sometimes those teams just aren't good enough to take advantage of it. The Titans team absolutely will take advantage of it. Uh, prediction tracker has got uh, Tennessee favored by. Uh, let's see, Tennessee favored by 0. .6 points. So they just, it, it basically, it's a pick them. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm a roll Tennessee here. I'm a roll Tennessee. I, I just, I, this, this feels like the perfect pick them game. You know, I, this, I'm, I'm rolling Titans. I'll roll Titans. Um, yeah. Let's, let's, <laughs> Brown Yeti said, uh, but they won, Chris. Uh, let's see, Ewan Tyrell says, How's your eight and eight prediction for Seattle going? It hey, was wrong. It was wrong after we, week one. It was wrong. Yeah, we were dead wrong. But it, I saw this team was going to be way better than I thought they were going to well, be. Well, and and they're letting Russ cook, man. Like That's they it. have not done that before. And I worked under it. the impression that Pete Carroll is going to be Pete Carroll, and he's going to make Russell Wilson hand the ball off seventy percent of the time. And if he was to do that, they're not that great of a football team. Yep. But they, hey, DK Metcalf, uh, no, DK next, Metcalf's the best receiver in football ne- right now. Next coming of Randy Moss. He's yeah. unbelievable. I don't unbelievable. know about Randy, but he's he's in the conversation as he's got potential to be one of the all-time great receivers. He oh, yeah. has that level potential. Uh, let's talk about the NFC East again. <laughs> and I bring this up because, like, every game could be the game that wins you the division and gets you into the playoffs. Uh, the Cowboys and Washington are a pick em. So, I... I would have to lean Washington as bad as the Cowboys played, but I know that the Cow- or the yeah I know that the Cowboys have a lot more talent than Washington does right now. But you get a you get a healthy Kyle Allen, I think this week. I I mean Washington's at home. I just I don't know, man. I th- th- that's why I was telling you earlier today that I hate these lines. Like I <laughs> I wish I wish somebody was favored so I could pick a dog here. I wish you know something along those lines. Um, I'm going to roll Cowboys. Like, I just, I think they've got more talent. I think they, that that game on Monday night was a disaster, an absolute disaster. And I, I don't know that they're, like, a whole lot better than that. But I do think that they are better than that. And I think that they'll show up this week and, and at least get a win. Like, I don't think Andy Dalton is that bad. And I think the offensive line will get figured out at least a little bit. Here's the problem, man. This defense that they're going up against in Washington is way better. That defensive front in Washington is way better than Arizona's defensive front. That's true. Like That's true. a lot, a lot better. Than but that defensive but at the front. same time, I also think that Washington is not going to be able to score the same way that Arizona was. No, no. But Washington's woes scoring wise, where they turn the ball over, is Dallas capable of? taking those picks i mean kyle allen's going to give you a shot to take the ball away have we seen anything from dallas that they can intercept the ball i i don't even know that they have an interception on the year i i don't know that i don't know birdie uh birdie jumped in said i hate this washington cowboys game i lean cowboys though uh give me the football team man i i went ahead and wrote down washington for you as soon as you (laughs) as soon as you started talking i was like he's going riverboat ron i know that's right i'm i'm in the tank with this guy uh birdie Birdie said, still think you are wrong about the Steelers, Chris. I think they're a top seven team. Their offense is getting better every week. I respect your stubbornness, but Pitt is legit, just not this week. No, no, because they're about to they're when they get hammered this week and they get hammered next week, then then I wonder how many people will change their tune and say, let's look at the record of the teams that beat them. They've beaten one team that has any wins at all, and that's the Browns at four wins. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, Philip Wiggins said, Andy Dalton is not mobile. Dallas O-line is depleted. With a solid O-line, I would give it to Dallas. Uh, Brown Yeti said, can we just call this the uh, this division the NFC disappointments? They don't deserve a compass direction. And then Birdie said, don't think Washington wants to win, in my opinion. I think they want one of those quarterbacks. Ooh, um, I don't know. Riverboat Ron does not like tanking. Yeah, that is a, no. a man with too much pride. You got that right. I mean, he was trying to win last week. He was trying so, to win last week. I think I think he wants to win. I think they're going to win. I don't think coaches tank in the NFL. That is a that is an NBA bullshit thing. You got that I'm right. Pen. I'm going to get it. Uh, you're good. Uh, Grant Kieran jumped in. He said, Iowa State, Oklahoma State this weekend. Thoughts? Uh, we did an entire deep dive on them on our Sportsbook Review show yesterday. 
On YouTube, you can go over to SBR Picks or just search for SBR Picks, and it's going to be right there. Our college football week eight. If you're having a hard time finding it because SBR oh. Picks does all their stuff, yeah. go to the Winning Cures Everything YouTube page, and we have a, a link that shows all of our, our SBR stuff yep. there. It's a, it's a playlist. Um, we do the college football playlist, and it's also in our appearances playlist. So. Yeah. We – we just to give you the answer. We both like the 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 rattlesnake. We're we're gonna go with OK State. Yeah, uh, Birdie said, um, was he actually trying to win? He could have kicked for overtime and won in overtime. Jones is a turnover machine. Uh, look, he knew that his offense was not very good, and that was no, yeah. that was your you, one shot. You got so. the ball on the two and a half yard line. To win the game, they haven't been at the two-yard line the entire game. I think he said this is the closest we've been to the end zone all day. Let's let's make one play and let's go. I didn't yeah. like the play call. I didn't like the play call at all. But I appreciate it to going forward. I I don't think it's in NFL coaches to 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 tank. Yeah, I I agree. Except maybe maybe Adam Gase or maybe he's that bad. I don't know. No, he's just that he's bad. He's just that bad. Uh, I'm gonna tell you this. This oh, is the move. Listen, hang on. Who? I want to always give credit where I where I can. Maybe it was Kevin Clark. I don't know. Um, I listen to a lot of different NFL people. The reason Adam Gase won't get fi- uh, fired all year is Adam Gase is their biggest asset right now. Because with Adam Gase, you're guaranteed the number one spot. Ah, that's okay. Okay. He he is their biggest asset. You fire him, maybe the team comes together, maybe they win a couple of games, and and you 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 blow your chance to do something special in the draft. And that's that's a good point. Um, let's see. Brown Yeti said two yards or a thirty five yard kick. I'm going for it every time. I'm going for it every time. Yep. And, and a real, I would say this: a true gambler would. Ron Rivera is an absolute gambler. Oh, absolutely. It's just in his blood. Moving on to another division game, we'll move to the NFC South, and we've got the Carolina Panthers and the New Orleans Saints. Saints are a seven and a half point favorite. They opened six and a half, and it's gone up a full point now. Uh, now you can still find sevens out there. Uh, Bet Online has got this thing at nine right now. Now I don't know why theirs is as crazy as it is, but minus nine, they've got juice to plus one ten. So you know, I doubt that you'll be able to to get that line for very long. But I I got to tell you. I am big on the Panthers here. I I like what this team's doing. I know they got beat by the by the Bears last week, but that Bears team, like they're built differently than the Saints team is. The Saints, I know they're getting Michael Thomas back. I get all that. I, it, uh, maybe not. Maybe not. I literally just got a news alert. I wrote it down while you were talking, so I had to reach out and get my pen. Okay. Um, Michael Thomas limited today in practice with ankle and hamstring problems. What in the world is going on with this guy? Like I, I, I swear, last week it was because of like an altercation at practice. Well, yeah, and, the last, well, last week they had a bob. We before it was punching dudes. Um, well, yeah, that's, we that's before that it was actual legit injuries, but it was this hamstring, and we know hamstrings are real deals. I didn't know anything about the ankle, but hamstrings are things that are just going to linger for guys who run fast. I mean, this is just like it just continues. Like it's well, but that's that's what soft tissue injuries do. Yeah, a boy no, 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 Matt would get you. on here and tell us that. So I'm just. God bless. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. I think he probably plays. I think he's more of a decoy or it's going to be one of those, all those five to seven yard outs that he catches. He's, he's not getting the 12 yards after that anymore. It's going to be a catch and drop. I, I like the Panthers here. I do too. I do too, by the way, I like the Panthers a lot. I think Teddy two gloves is real. He's good. This offense is, is, is way more improved. Um, unless this saints defense can come out of this bye week and look better than they have been. I think this is going to be a higher scoring affair. Uh, yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think and you're you right. Catching more than a touchdown. That's a problem. Yes. That's, that's where I'm coming from on this. Like people still love the saints and I get it. Um, Birdie said, me too. Teddy is a cover machine in divisional games. Don't forget, Teddy knows the Saints. He knows his offense. He knows what they're going to do. But, hell, we all know the offense. If you can somehow control Kamara, you can shut this thing down. Because Drew is not throwing the football farther than seven yards. You can basically play everybody at press, bring every safety up, bring everybody up. Nobody's beating you deep because Drew can't throw the ball deep. No, you're right. 
He's he's got the old man arm right now. But it doesn't matter. Alvin's Alvin is 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 just a cheat code. Alvin's a joystick. I've I've never seen a running back. I mean, I did. I, I watched Barry Sanders most of my childhood. That's what I remember is a guy that just it doesn't matter where he gets the ball. He get it in space, and you're you're just dead. Yeah. You're he's just he's breaking every ankle out there, and he's outrunning everybody. Yeah. No, you're right. You are right. Uh, we've got another big divisional game moving over to the AFC or sorry NFC West. And that would be the Seahawks traveling to Glendale, Arizona to face the Cardinals. Cardinals are a a three-and-a-half-point underdog. And, you know, I I thought people would fall in love with the Cardinals after that Monday night uh, just debacle at Cowboys Stadium. But 65% of the tickets, according to SBRodds.com, are on Seattle right now. The line has moved from three to three-and-a-half. A Uh, a lot of people love Seattle this week, and – I, I got to tell you, I think I kind of like the Cardinals in this spot. They they tend to play the division uh, tougher than they play everybody else. And this looks like a pretty good football team right now. I, I think they will be able to hang in there and score on the Seattle Seahawks defense. Um, t- talk, talk me off this. Yeah, I, I, this is going to be one where we're going to disagree. Um, I, I think Seattle had the week off. I think their defense is not very good, but their defense is a hell of a lot better than the Cowboys. Russell Wilson's not going to turn the ball over. They struggled to score against the shitty Cowboys, and the Cowboys gave them three turnovers in this game. Okay, I I don't know how you struggle to score with three turnovers against the Cowboys. All right, but they did. Seahawks defense way better than the Cowboys defense. Seahawks offense way better than the Cowboys offense, and it ain't close. Uh, he, uh, I know that divisional games are different for the charge uh, for the for the Cardinals. They do play in division tough. I understand that. I I'm telling you, I, against Russell Wilson, against this team coming off a of bye week, I think they're gonna come out and they're gonna beat the hell out of them. I just like Seattle a lot. Ethan on Facebook said Seahawks, no doubt. Um, Brown Yeti said Seahawks make Arizona look dumb, and Birdie said Murray had nine pass completions. Nine. I do like Seattle. Tough spot, Gary, coming off three road games. Seattle off I the can't bye. Explain, I can't explain the Cardinals' defense or offense being that bad. I can't either, which is why I think this is the perfect setup. But, you know, I, <laughs> I think it's the perfect setup. They're going back home. Like, I, I feel good about them. So, okay. But I, I will go against the grain here. No problem there. Uh, Birdie said, also, coach and quarterback are Texas guys. That was a big win for Arizona. Eh, yeah, I mean, sure. Sure, I guess. Uh, <laughs> 49ers are going to New England, headed up to Foxborough. We get Kyle Shanahan and his old buddy Bill Belichick. Cam Newton did not look good last week. It was the first oh. time in 40 games that the Patriots had lost a game where they did not allow a touchdown. They let the Broncos kick six field goals, and that was it, and that was enough to handle – your Patriots, good sir. The Pats are now a two-point favorite over the 49ers. Uh, Jimmy G playing this week, it looks like. You know, we, we'll see. I mean, he, he got pulled out of the last game. But I, you know, they, they won the game against the Rams. I did not expect them to do that. The 49ers, 49ers looked good last week. The Pats did not, and yet the Pats are a home favorite. Uh, thoughts? I mean, you're you're looking at the Patriots losing three games in a row. I think people just don't think Bill Belichick's going to do that. Uh, I wouldn't touch this game with a ten foot pole. It scares the hell out of me. Uh, I don't. Patriots look bad. Cam Newton looks really bad. Um, the game Jimmy G got pulled out of. They oh, were two lo- ago, right? It like, was two weeks ago. Yeah. They were losing really bad, and he's still dealing with ankle soreness. Last week, he looked fantastic yeah. against what is a real good defense, uh, defensive front. Um, you know, that that what what got all the football buzz talking after last week's game was um Aaron Donald did nothing, did nothing. Kyle Shanahan completely took him out of the game. Um, and and that's something I don't know that's ever been done ever since he's been in the league. Um, uh, and uh it's just kind of some wizardry about shit, Kyle. Um, I'll get into some Ram stuff later when we get to our gambling picks. But uh, I think the 49ers are getting healthier, getting better. They are the better football team from start to finish, top to bottom in this game. Um, You know, it's just one of those, the Patriots are backed up against the wall. Now, everyone will tell you that practice matters more to the Patriots than anybody else in the NFL out of all 32 teams because they do not have a base. 
Okay. They don't have a base offense. They don't have a base defense. Every week they install a completely new offense and defense for whoever they're playing. And they did have to try to do that all through Zoom without any practice at all. Okay. I, that is the excuse that has been given of why the Broncos, who was a bad football team, went in there and kind of shut down the offense terribly. The only issue I had is there were multiple times where Cam Newton had wide open guys, and there's not enough practice in the world for him to miss those guys as badly as he missed them. That's that's the fear for me is it's hard for me to swallow the practice pill, which I do ab- agree with and understand how Bill Belichick does things. They don't beat you with talent. They've never had more talent than any team they ever play, ever. They, they just get a bunch of middle-tier guys that all do their job. The problem is, is Cam can, can Cam Newton do his job? They ran two trick plays with Julian Edelman just to get the ball down the field. Yeah. Yeah. It, all of this stuff that you're talking about is exactly why I love the Pats. It I'm scares me, but the, hang on. the only thing is, is they've had a whole week of practice this week with exactly. no issues. When, when they get to practice, they are really, really, really hard to beat because nobody games plan game plans. I don't even know how to use words right now. Game plans better <laughs> than bill. They yeah. just, nobody in the world does it. Okay. And, and I feel like bill has Kyle Shanahan's number. Like he, I just there. There's some of that. There's some of that. Kyle's going to have some ghosts. Uh, I think that he's going to see. The other thing is with this is is this this 49ers team is not great. Now I had the Niners last week. I had them on the money line last week. I love the 49ers last week. And one of the reasons I love the 49ers, I'll just go ahead and let the cat out of the bag is. That Rams team is absolutely a fraud. That Rams team has four wins. And would you like to know who their four wins are against? Uh, I know the Jets are one. Um, no. No, the Jets are not one. Who is I don't the think Giants? they played the Jets. All four NFC East football teams. Oh, get the hell out of here. Are you serious? That's the only wins they've got. You want to talk about frauds, baby. This team needs to be brought up on charges. They're not a good football team. They just beat the hell out of the NFC East. Well, there you go. Uh, Birdie jumps in, by the way, said, I wish I could figure out how you lads handicap stuff that to me is very meaningful. You guys just don't even budge. That's why I love you guys. Uh, yeah, no, we, we are very stubborn with our picks. Now, there are games that I will I will let Chris talk me out of. Um, like, I'm, I'm all over the Pats here. Like, I was all over the Cardinals before. I, you know, there's certain things. Like, the, the Steelers I'm not, I'm not against that Pats team. It's just no way on earth I could put money on either one of these teams. I think the 49ers beat a team that people thought were good, and they're not good. And I think the Patriots got beat by a real bad team, but that was a really weird situation. Cam, Cam is the factor that scares me in this. Oh, yeah. I mean, that makes perfect sense. Uh, if you, you know, if you absolutely had to make a pick, you rolled in Pats. Yeah, yeah, but it, it is. And this is this is and this is not the Homer in me. This is not the I love the pass. It's no, a, I can't see Bill setup. Belichick. I think Bill Belichick will sacrifice children to the football gods before he loses three games in a row. Yes, yes. That's. I mean, true. that's just that's just it. I mean, he'll he'll get on wife number three because he sacrifices wife number two to to the football gods before he loses three games in a row. I just can't. I did. That's just the. That's my only logic. There's no football in it at all. It's Cam Newton will either be good or Cam Newton will be sacrificed. Yeah. I, I don't know that you're getting any better than, than Cam Newton this year, but either way, uh, Terry said, I told you Cam was fake gold, Chris. And and by the way, we, we got the recipe. It's all good. I, I saw it. No worries. <laughs> uh, let's, let's move to another division game. Chiefs heading to Denver. The Broncos are a nine-and-a-half-point underdog at home. Coming off of a win in Foxborough, um, I I like the Broncos here. I like Drew Locke being back. I think that they are getting a little bit healthier. Eh. I mean, that Melvin Gordon and not Melvin Gordon. Uh, is it's that Melvin Gordon? Is? Yeah, Melvin Gordon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, him and Ingram. I swear to God, they those two just drive me up the wall uh, <laughs> with, with their names. It's two Melvins. They used to be on the same team. I know it was even worse then. I was, I was gonna say it's even worse. I did it all the time when they were on the same team. The Chiefs to me, show up when they have to play against somebody that could potentially be a threat, right? That's it, it's why they it's why they came out and looked great and then went and got beat by the uh, the Raiders. It's why uh, I believe that they showed up to beat up on the Bills, and then this week they will kind of eh, 
maybe take the week off a little bit. I think this Denver team is set up to be able to compete with them. I think the rosters match up well. I kind of like the Broncos in this spot, not, not necessarily to win, but I think they're going to be able to keep this thing closer than 9.5, 10. Like, you can find a 10.5 at Bet Online. You can find 10 at Pinnacle, uh, and then it's 9.5 across the board everywhere else. Uh, sorry, there's a 10 at Bavada as well. I, like, we, we're going to set the line at 9.5 because that's where it is most everywhere else for our, our regular picks on here. I... I like the Broncos to be able to keep this thing relatively close. That go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Let me let me tell you about your boy Drew Locke. Drew Locke is not who we thought he was. Okay, everybody wanted to crown him. I said, "Real be be careful, be careful," because I crowned Baker way too early, and <laughs> Drew Locke looks a whole lot like Baker. All right. Last week he accounted for three turnovers, two interceptions, and a fumble. This guy has not looked good at all. All right. Not, not before he got hurt, not after he got hurt. I do not think he is the answer to any of their problems. Well, it, it won't be this Sunday either. Uh, Birdie, by the way, jumped in. That was another thing that I had written down here. Blizzard Sunday, can't wait for this one. Yeah, there's a real good chance that there's going to be snow. Um, and, and oh, I, oh, then Kansas City's going to eat them alive because Kansas City plays way better in bad weather than I think the Broncos do. I don't know, man. Like, I like Fangio I in, in these kind of spots. I, I don't, feel good about the I don't. Broncos. I don't. Drew Lock. Drew Lock is. He don't have the secondary for Kansas City is going to eat him alive. He's going to have two more turnovers this game. Watch it. Okay. All right. So you rolling teams, huh? Yes. Give me all. I'll, I'll lay all those points. I don't care. All right, well, I'm not you, afraid. You I'm lay not afraid. Them, I just I don't. Take I don't think Drew's the the answer. I think Drew is Baker. I mean, it's possible. It's possible. The difference is, is Drew cost him what a third round pick and not the number one overall pick. Second round. Yeah, okay. second, second round. Still, way. still a long way from number one overall. No, you're you're correct about that. He was picked in the 40s, but uh, you know that's one of those guys that eh, Roquan Smith or or Bradley Chubb would look a whole lot better on this roster. Oh, you are 100 percent right about that. Good gracious. Um, moving into Sunday night football, Tampa Bay headed to the Las Vegas Raiders. Now I'm a, I'm a fan of this matchup. This it's going to be like a great. This is going to be a fun game. Uh, Raiders are three and a half point dogs at home. I, you know, Brady coming off that massive win over the Packers. That defense looked fantastic. They finally Ooh. showed up in a big, big, big way. And, and you I know think, how you know how happy I was watching Aaron Rodgers. Oh yeah, I know. Dance. He did a little hip thrust. He did a little swing in his dingaling, and then he didn't get a first down the rest of the damn game. Yeah, yeah. I, I Couldn't knew, have happened to a better person. I knew you were all over that one. I knew, like I knew that you loved that, and uh, and it was entertaining to watch. I will say that that Bucks team shut them down, uh, and and I should have seen it. You know, I I did not put in nearly the effort in my picks last week, and you could tell it. So again, I went one and four last week. It was not good, and I took the Packers, thinking, man, you know, the Packers defense I think is all right. I, Aaron Rodgers playing out of his mind. Da, 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 da. I should have known. I it just known. looked too easy. It just yeah. looked too easy. So you have uh, you've got that right, but this go round, Tommy coming off of a uh, a massive massive home win, gets to travel out to Vegas. Uh, Raiders are coming off a big time win over the Chiefs. Now that was you know two weeks ago. Um, I just I don't know. Uh, this is one. Birdie said Raiders coming off that massive win against the Chiefs. Uh, Gruden gets smashed coming out of bias. Bucks all day long here. See, yeah, he. I don't know how much I can put into that right now. I, I, just, I think I think that let me tell you what I think. I think this is going to be the first real bad game that Derek Carr has. You think so? Yeah, I think this Bucks defense has now reached the level of we we can go into good teams, real good offensive teams, and shut them down. I you know what I think I might I might side with you out here. Like this and is I'm gonna tell you this, and, and, and I mean, it's it's all from I don't think their corners are elite, but. And there's nobody in the league that's hanging with rugs. The issue is not going to be that. The issue is going to be they they beat they make the receivers ineligible because they put the quarterback on their ass. You yeah. can't throw the ball when you're on your ass. You just it's, you're just not allowed. Yeah, you've got a that you've front a seven. White and Sue have just and and, and Pierre Paul, uh, not Pierre. Yeah, JPP um, had just just annihilated Aaron Rodgers, and I think the offensive line for the Packers are probably better than the Raiders. I could be wrong on that, but I listen, man. 
that Raiders offensive line, they better bring the lunch bell Sunday because Todd Bowles is going to be dialing up blitz after blitz after blitz. And Carr's a pretty good quarterback. Carr ain't close to Aaron Rodgers good. Now, you are correct about that. Last game we're going to talk about is the Monday night football game. The Bears are headed to L.A. to face the Rams, and the Rams are a six-point favorite. That opened as a seven-point favorite. Now they're down to uh, now they're down to six. I love the Bears in this spot. I mean, they're five and one. They're not a great football team by any stretch of the imagination, but that defense is absolutely legit. And like you talked about, the Rams might just be frauds. Like I, I think they really are. Now that's not to say that Chicago isn't. But I feel a little bit better about this Chicago team than I do about the Rams. Uh, I maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. I, I haven't done a ton of digging on this one, but um, oh, Birdie said absolutely, Chris. Did you see him after that Chiefs game? He uh, he screwed and drank all that off uh, all that off week. He was out of his mind, satisfied after that win. Uh, after that win, excuse me. Yeah, I, I could see that about Carr. So yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll both take the books here. Uh, I'm taking the Bears over the Rams. I. I think they get the win. I think they went out right. I do too. I'm, I am. I am riding. I'm riding the Bears for a minute. I like them. I think they're better. I think they're figuring out how to put together an offense every week on the fly against who they play. Uh, Aaron Aaron Donald will have a much better impact this week because Nagy is not the offensive genius that uh, Kyle Shanahan is. But it doesn't matter. I I still think that this Rams team. Are, are fraudulent. They've got flaws, and they've looked really good against four bad teams, yeah. and they've looked really bad against three decent teams, two uh, decent teams. Carlos Gomez jumps in, said, "How about them Bears?" And he said, "Bear down." And I wish our boy Damien was in here to hear. Yeah, us you can his, see uh, that we don't always crap on the Bears. Yeah, no, we absolutely don't. But uh, we but call yeah, like we see it. And this yeah. week, we both agree we see the Bears. Yes, I see the Bears winning this game. I like them in the spot. Faux show. Sure. 